to the 2017 Chicago Blues Hall of Famers and their interviews. I am very, 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 very ecstatic and I'm honored to be able to bring these guys and these ladies to you that have paved the way, that made the way, and out of no way, to be perfectly honest, for you today, all y'all out of Tainers, now to have a way. Um, we're opening up with my first guest of the evening. Uh, he's a legendary, iconic club owner. My good friend, Mr. Larry Stevens. Larry, welcome. Thank you, Holly. And thank you for exposing people that's been doing this for years and years and years and never got any credit for it. Well, you know, um, that was my whole idea. Uh, when I had my show here at Star Planet for three years, what, three years ago maybe, was to expose uh, our greatness and expose uh, our legends. And especially now, I'm my passion, I mean, I'm real passionate about exposing people like you before they're demised and then other people, y'all know what I'm talking about, <laughs> say how great we are and, and, and become still financially greedy uh, for us paving the way. Uh, Larry is, uh, wow, what can I tell you about this? First of all, he's a gentleman. He's always been a gentleman. I've never, ever known him not to be that first. And in his business dealings, he was fair, and he was respected, and he respected his entertainers, he respected his people that worked with him. And uh, I know that, uh, Larry, you started uh, in this business, in the bar business, in the entertainment business, in the club business, in 1968, is that correct? 1968. Yeah. I started a small place called Vivi's Hideaway, mm -hmm. but it was connected to the original Burning Spear on 55th State. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I finally learned how to mix drinks at Vivi's, I went over to the Burning Spear to go to work because you had to be top flight to work over there mm -hmm. around the entertainers and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fell in love with the music when I started working over there as a bartender. Because mm -hmm. I had the music every weekend we had. We had, uh, we had the biggest stars in the business there. Who, who, who were some of the uh, people that were there? Uh, people like B.B. King, mm -hmm. Bobby Bland, mm -hmm. Freddie King, mm -hmm. Johnny Taylor. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, uh, they were big names then. Yes. And, uh, so we just, uh, I just fell in love with the, with the, with the music. Yeah, you fell in love. And yeah. I said that whenever I get me a place, I'm gonna have music also. Well, you sure did that. Um, Larry ventured out, he ventured out. He became, uh, I don't wanna take it too fast. If you, if, if you have something you wanna insert, just let me know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I remember Larry becoming the uh, bartender of the year and that was at Fluke's place. And Fluke's place was what, 83rd or 87th in Cottage Grove? 82nd in Cottage Grove. 82nd in Cottage Grove. And uh, everybody went there. You, I mean, you, everybody that was anybody would go through there, stop through there. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, yeah, you're right. When that, when we, uh, excuse me, when I first started working there, uh, 1978, 
uh, you're right, it was the place to be. Yeah. yeah. When it first opened, I worked like 31 straight days without an off day. That's mm -hmm. how busy it was right. at that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about everybody came through, all the entertainers and everybody came through. Yeah, that. yeah. It was, it was a place, it was a place to be, it was a place to go. And if you had any kind of style and any kind of class and any kind of uh, savoir faire, you was up in there. I mean, you was up in there. It was going on, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, those were days where women dressed. They they, they, they they dressed elegantly, and they were sharp, and fellas had creases in their pants, and they had alligator shoes on, and they wore their hats. And they and and they were kind of cocked to the side. You could wear they were kind of cocked to the side, but they was they was leaning, y'all. Mm -hmm. And they was they was making a statement of the pride that they had within themselves. And this is the era that uh, Larry Stevens helped make a part of history, make that history in. Uh, Larry, what do after you left uh, Flukies? Uh, where where did you go from there? Well, that's when I purchased the Tiger Lounge, and I went into business for myself. All right. That's when I first went into business for myself in 1980. 1980. The yeah. Tiger. Y'all know anything about Tiger? Tiger. Seventy ninth and. Uh, Y'all know anything about Tiger? Uh huh. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that was the place to go. So tell us more about that. Well, the Tiger was more of a disco. Mm -hmm. there was a, it was on the tail end of the disco age. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I had the uh, different color lighted floor, and we had three bars, two downstairs, one upstairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody who was somebody used to come there also. That's right. But everybody came. Everybody was welcome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. bar nobody out. You know, right. That wasn't, that wasn't the thing to do. Right. I wanted something nice for, for, for my people. Right to have to come to and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. Reasonable prices on the drinks. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I started, I couldn't do without it, I started having shows there. <laughs> <laughs> At least once a week I'd have yeah. uh, some live entertainment. I'll have live entertainment. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, uh, this is a part of the South Side that I grew up in. And uh, it was it was abundantly entertainment was in abundance. Uh, you could not go down a street and not have a club where somebody wasn't playing some kind of guitar or something or singing something. And it wasn't blues; it was uh, R and B. Yeah. It was a lot of R and B. Right. Uh, uh, that has uh, I don't know. The R&B and the blues have been uh, diminished, you know, uh, by uh, sabotage. But it's still the greatest music in the world, and uh, it will be. Uh, after you left uh, the Tiger, well, where'd you go then? Uh, where'd you do then, uh, Larry? Uh, I went to a, a place on 59th and State. It was formerly uh, Jack's Back Door, mm -hmm. and I named it Stevens on State, SOS. <laughs> SOS. <laughs> I missed that one. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was on 59th and State. And, uh, <laughs> but like you said, though, the, in those days, <clears throat> many places, especially black-owned establishments, mm -hmm. had bands. Mm -hmm. Had band, R and B and blues bands, mm -hmm. and uh, never got credit for for doing the things that we did. I know, uh, I, I know. We we and, never uh, do get credit for anything that we do. The credit that we got was shutting us down, right? Which was I'm talking about the uh, yep. African American establishments. I know. Uh, uh, I know that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about that after a while because I don't want to get into that because yeah. I go on and on and on. Yeah. Okay, but uh, after uh, after the SOS, what, what, where'd you go? Where'd you do? Okay, I, uh, that's when I went to uh, a place on 73rd and Cottage Grove called the Classy B. Classy B, I remember that. The classy B. And it was very classy. Yeah. I remember <laughs> that. I remember that. 
Um, and then we built that one from the ground. From the ground. Like we, we built it like we wanted it to have, to have it. Mm -hmm. So we had a room for a stage area, mm -hmm. dance area, stage area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because I knew I was going to have live entertainment there also. You know, you you, you knew that. You were stuck with that live entertainment. Stuck with huh? it. Boy, we 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 coach you, huh? From the beginning. Uh <laughs> Next year will be 50 years I've been 50 years dealing in this bar business. In the bar business, wow. I've been around bands all that time. Wow. Can we pull up some pictures? Of, of, uh, is it possible that we can pull up some of those pictures? Um, if, if, if uh, Tony, Tony is our, uh, is our technician out here who does a wonderful job. He really does. Um, Anything that happens out here, technically, believe it or not, it's not his fault. It's sometimes, it's it's sometimes the computer crashes. So we have to wait. We have to wait. Oh, there's a picture there, Larry. Who is that? Who is that with you? That's uh, standing next to me. Is in the middle is Uncle Rail, the uh, comedian. Uh huh. And that's Jimmy from Jimmy's Lounge. Uh, He's a a, a a long time bar owner. Okay, he's and he's still in existence. Still in existence. He? Where's uh, he at? 138th in uh, Indiana. Okay, go out there and see Jimmy. And go see Jimmy. Go and see Jimmy. He's at 138th in Indiana. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I, I think I worked out there for Jimmy one time. You might have because he, he had bands out there. He still does. Yeah, out there. I, I I think I worked for him. I can, you know. When you, when, you, when you do so much, you can't remember everything. So if somebody tells yeah. me, Holly, you did this, you know what I say? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, do we have something else to tell that we can pull up? Because, uh, uh, you know, life, these club owners, and I say this, they, to me they are, they are a special breed. They are a special breed of people to me because you know what it is to deal with the public. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you have to love it. You have to love it to be a club owner. And I feel that these guys, uh, like Clarence Ludd, Don Simmons, who's still going there, I feel like these people love people. You have to love people to, and, and want to see people happy in order to be in the nightclub business. Larry, tell me, tell me some more of, uh, of uh, your endeavors. Well, um, like I said, it was at the uh, Classy B, and I uh, was there for uh, 15, 16 years, actually. Mm -hmm. And had, um, I said, had quite a bit of entertainment there. Mm -hmm. Who did you have? Guys you, like you, you Dale Roy and uh, Pete Allen. Pete Allen, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace. Willie Clayton used to stop by because mm -hmm. I happened to meet him uh, at the Burning Spear when I was working there when mm -hmm. he first came to town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got to be good friends. Mm -hmm. And every time when he moved out of town, when he, every time he come in town, he come where I, wherever I was. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd have to talk him into singing a song or two. <laughs> <laughs> Which helped my business. Yes, yes, I understand. Yeah, yes. because he was very popular at that time. Yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You've had a lot of, you've had a lot of association with some of, some of our great, entertainment heroes. Yeah, Artie Blues Boy was a very good friend of mine. Artie, yeah. Very good friend of mine. Yeah, Wherever Artie. I was, Artie came, mm -hmm. and always tried to help me. Good. That's good. He always tried to help me. Well, you know, he was that kind of, Artie was that kind of guy. He really was. Yeah, he was that kind of guy. He And funny, oh, he was funny, you know. But uh, we're going to have uh, uh, Artie's uh, wife and his son on. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm, because uh, we want to, we want to honor him uh, as well as honoring you. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I've always been passionate about us getting the, some credit, you know. Yeah. And uh, this this show, I'm very passionate about doing, and uh, I'm honored to be able to sit here and do this with you and for you. 
I really am. And I'm honored to be sitting with you. You know, guess what? And we just glad to be here. Glad to be here. <laughs> just glad to be here. But I'm so proud of you for, for uh, doing this and uh, thinking about other people, yep. especially the uh, biggest star as you've been all through the years. And, Cause, you know, I've been knowing you quite a while, Holly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've been knowing each other for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. knowing each other for a long time. And you've always been a lady. Thank you. Ever since I've been knowing you. Thank you, thank and you. And a great entertainer. Thank you, thank you very much. Y'all hear that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Larry. Uh, uh, but uh, this is about you. I want to hear some more about you and and uh, some of your some of your escapades. Uh, uh, I know you, you've had a few hard times. You know, club business is rough. It's rough. It's rough, baby. Um, it, ain't, it, ain't all, it ain't all glamorous, you know. You know, yeah. but if, if there's some things you'd like to speak on, speak yeah, on. Yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, like, like doing the uh, bands and entertainment and stuff at the places, especially the, 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 the black club owners, always let people come in for free to see the bands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had to struggle to pay the bands. Yes. So we had to like deal with each other. Yes. You know the bands, we'd have to talk to each other yes. about trying to uh, keep things going. Yes. You know. Yeah. Fortunately I had some good bands that wanted some place to where they could practice. Yes. And uh, uh, and do shows where they could uh, Make themselves sharpen better, their skills. sharpen their skills. Well, you know what? I, I, let me interrupt you. That's what's missing today. These bands think they sharp already, they and think they don't need them. to. Uh, they think they don't need to practice, mm -hmm. and that's how come there's no showmanship anymore. Right. Yeah, okay, they just get up and they just play something. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's it's very very. Uh, it's 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 at a point where as there is no uh, seriousness entertainment. Yeah, there's no entertainment. That there there the people are not entertained. They're just getting up. Where's gig? Where 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 what time? How much do it pay? Yeah. That's what nobody's putting anything into it right. like like they did. And this is how come uh, people like Larry Stevens and Clarence Ludd and some of the other black club owners had such success because they worked, the, they, the entertainers and the club owners, they worked together. Yeah. They worked together and made, and made something for themselves, you know? And uh, nobody knows that, and nobody's been given credit for that until now. Uh, Larry respected his, his entertainers, and his entertainers respected him. And uh, that's, that's what made an entertaining club, an entertaining show, and made it comfortable for, for your, um, your clients, your customers, yeah. to come in and enjoy themselves, you know? Yeah, I had, um, at uh, Larry's and Harvey, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had the a blues band every Monday, mm -hmm. and a buddy guy came in. Well, matter of mm -hmm. fact, I'll tell you what exactly what happened. His brother used to, buddy guy's brother, Phil, used to come in mm -hmm. every Monday mm -hmm. to hear the band. Mm -hmm. He told buddy guy about my band. Mm -hmm. So buddy guy came by the place, hired my guitar player, uh, Rick Hall, mm -hmm. and the drummer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, travel with him now, today. Isn't that something? But when they come in town, they'd always come back to Larry's. Right. Because I always treated them right. Right. Oh, you always treated right. And Tim uh, Austin, I'm sorry. Uh, Tim, Austin Tim Austin was a drummer. Yeah. And on that note, about I want to hear this story about um, oh. Uh, Jer uh, Jeremiah, Jer Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah Rogers. Yes, Jeremiah Rogers. Yes, he's a he's a, a great young man. He uh, when he first came to my place, uh, him, I think his cousin and a, and a very good friend. That they were like 
13, 10, and 9 years old. Isn't that something? Yeah, their mother and father brought them out there. Isn't that something? And uh, I put them on stage. Uh -huh. They said, Larry, you're going to get in trouble putting these kids on there. I said, I'm just going to get in trouble because uh, I want to expose these kids to something. Right. You yeah. know, I didn't put them around no alcohol or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I, never did. I never would do that to a kid. I got too many kids myself. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but I did let them entertain there. And at that time, at that stage in their life, they were good. I mean, they weren't like cute little kids. Mm, they were serious. They were entertainers. Right. They put on a show. Right. Mm -hmm. And played good music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you can tell by today, Jim, Jemiah Rogers is, uh, I think he's got a new CD coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a, plays at Buddy Guys now. And yes. He's doing, he's doing yes. well. Yes, he's doing I'm well. so happy for him. Yeah, he's very, doing very well. Yeah. And that's good that, that uh, you took the initiative to expose uh, them as they were kids, their parents also took initiative to get them exposed. Yeah. You know, and that's, the, that's you know, that's how it starts, uh, guys. You gotta, you gotta take these kids, man, while they're young and, and raise them to do something and be something so they'll have something uh, and, and remain something all through their lives. You have to do that. Um, your buddy, my buddy, Purvis Staple. Purvis Staple. Where's Purvis at? Purvis is still out in the suburbs. Yes, okay. And we talk now. I'm, I'm retired right now. Yes, okay. But uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm semi-retired, I put it that way, because yes. I'm, I'm uh, managing a place uh, mm -hmm. out in Dalton. Okay. And uh, and uh, Perv came by to see me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, he always uh, came by to see you. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, I've been trying to call him because I, I have to keep up with Perv. Yes, I understand. He's a he's old timer that it's still around and still likes to talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to talk with him because yeah, 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 you all just at a stage, <laughs> this stage in our life, we got a lot to talk about. Yes. Yeah, you do. Yes, <laughs> y'all do. There's not too many people you can talk to about a lot. Yes. Of yeah. Yeah. I would like to get I would like to get Perv stable here. And just let him talk, cause yeah. he do like that. He loves to talk, <laughs> and he's very knowledgeable. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Yes, mm -hmm. he's got a lot of say, and has a lot of wisdom. Yes, you know? he does. Um, so how many how many kids you got, uh, Larry? Six. Six kids. Boy, you busy. Three wasn't boys, you? three girls. Boy, you busy. busy. <laughs> you was busy, wasn't you? A lot of college tuitions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. Um, well, I had four, four, four to uh -huh. graduate from college. Oh, that's isn't that wonderful? Uh -huh. That's commendable. That's really commendable. And the other two are doing doing well for themselves. That's good. That's very good. That's yeah. very good. Well, like I said, he was he was a gentleman. He was a gentleman, and he was a, this man has been honorable and a gentleman. And uh, we're going to get back and with Larry and see what else he wants to talk about. We're going to go to a commercial now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. See you in a minute. Oh, it's commercial time. Yeah. Lane? No, not at all. Are you not paying attention? Are you texting? I was just checking in with my mom. I was telling her that I thought we'd be home by six. It's okay. There's enough time. Just pay attention. I'm not even halfway through my text. There's no way. I'm not even going to look up. My babies are in the car. You have to pay attention. It's just supposed to be a quick text. I'm so sorry.
Golden's Tropical World. Come to Golden's Tropical World for tropical fish of all sizes, colors, and types, and other small animals like iguanas and birds from all over. Beautiful tanks, pet supply needs, including dog and cat food. And expert consultation. Check out Golden's Tropical World, 8611 South Ashland Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Call ahead 773-239-8809. Your pet shop. Every now and then I get that feeling. And I've got something I wanna say. One of the great things about being a vegan is that the uniqueness of it. And I've got to say my way. So gathered with me today are uh, just a sampling of those vegans who have become loyal supporters of Soul Vegetarian. Welcome to Soul Vegetarian Restaurant. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled heart attack or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Why? Why? Why are you following me? Why my hoodie make me look suspicious? Why does my music make me dangerous? Why are people that are supposed to protect me attacking me? Why are you afraid of me? Why do you think I'm dangerous? Why do I fear the people who are supposed to protect me? Why can't I make a peace sign without you labeling the gang sign? Why does standing on ground only work when I'm on the ground? Why do you show this photo over this one? Why do you only stop and frisk me? Why do you have low expectations for me? Why can't I run down the street without causing alarms? Why do you think I'm a thug? Why do you assume I'm armed? Why can't I break? Why is my mom scared every time I leave the house? Why are you targeting me? Why am I a target? Why? 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 I know why. And it has to stop. It must stop. Because I have dreams. Because I can change the world. Because I will make a difference. Because I have a family. Because I am strong. Because I am talented. I have a voice. I can find a cure. I have goals. I can lead the country. I am determined. I have a future. Because I'm a scholar. I am powerful. I'm someone's friend. I'm someone's brother. I'm someone's son. Someone loves me. And because my life matters too. My life matters. 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 Our lives matter. And so did theirs. I told you we'd be right black <laughs> and we'd be all white. We were just sitting here discussing, uh, while the commercial was going on, we were just discussing uh, what, uh, who has worked uh, at Larry's, uh, at Larry's place at 147th Street when it was there. You want to tell me one more time? Because you know I'm, I'm getting forgetful. Yeah, <laughs> well. <laughs> At Larry's, I had uh, my main group was uh, Joe Barr. Joe Barr, that's the singing his man. Joe oh. Barr in the band. And, uh, 
Joe Barr was with me almost 15 years. Mm. Ain't that so something? So we got to be very good friends. Yes, I understand, mm -hmm. yeah. He's, a uh, matter of fact, he's doing a, a play mm -hmm. where he's, he's playing uh, uh, Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, he can do that. Saturday and tomorrow and, and, and Sunday. Okay. In Park Forest, mm -hmm. Illinois. And okay. I'll be there. You'll be there? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to call you and get the information because I would, I would like to see that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the place I am now. Yeah, tell, tell us where you are. Sandpiper. So, I'm so we can start like that. a manager. Where, Sandpiper. It's on 144th and uh, Chicago Road in Dalton, Illinois. Okay, the Sandpiper. Yeah, we what, just had moved? a grand opening. No, he just, just made it that name. Oh. I guess he just oh. liked the name. Okay, but, all right, uh, okay. We had a grand opening a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we had uh, live entertainment. We had uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Lee there and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sidney Joe Qualls, mm -hmm. who sang. Mm -hmm. Marshall Thompson stopped by mm -hmm. from okay. the Shy Lights. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah so. I noticed all of, our, uh, all of our black clubs are moving to the suburbs now. Yeah. They're all in the suburbs. They're not in the city anymore. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame. I ca I call it. Well, my you know I'm I'm very outspoken. Anybody knows 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 me, know that I will open my mouth and tell the truth. But I call it Southside Entertainment rape mm -hmm. that happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. So uh, we're not in the city. Uh, we're all in the suburbs now. So uh, if you want to see any of your people and our people, talented people, you're going to have to go to the suburbs and see them. They're no longer uh, on the south side of Chicago. Okay, everything has, has been uh, raped from the south side and taken to the north side. Yeah. And uh, that's the truth, you know. So uh, I just need, but I'm very happy that oh, I've got Larry here. So you know who he is, and so that you can respect, have more respect for what was done for your entertainment pleasures, uh, probably that you didn't know anything about. You know, Larry, what else you want to tell us about? Well, I, I, it's something I just have to say. I'm getting off the subject a little mm -hmm, bit, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still part of the subject. Yes. Anyway, but you know what you said about the... Uh, Black bars moving to the south suburbs and things like that. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, we had uh, difficulty in our neighborhoods to get liquor license for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the south and west side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say it's because of all the problems that we're having about the shootings and the mm -hmm. murders and things. Mm -hmm. But none of that happens in taverns. I, no, I'm sorry. Some of it happens in taverns, mm -hmm. but some of it happens in banks, happens mm -hmm. in grocery stores, happens in fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. So you can't blame it on the taverns. That shouldn't be a reason why we shouldn't be able to open up taverns in our own neighborhoods anymore. Well, the reason why we can't open up taverns in our neighborhoods anymore because, first of all, the guns were not put on the streets by black people. That's number one. Number two, is they were put in our kids' hands. Number three, our kids don't know what to do with them, so they just shoot at each other. Now, because of that, that designed an excuse to close up the south side and west side taverns because there's too much shooting going on. Well, I wonder how come. See, it's, it's, it's called a design program for us to fail. And I understand this and I speak on it and it's because it's the truth. Now, that means that my brother over here can't run a club where I can go to and feel safe because younger generation got the guns and they just shooting at anybody. 
So that's the excuse of how come he can't get a liquor license. It's, it's, it's a vicious circle, you all. And please, don't ever think that Mr. Stevens here ran a club where you wasn't safe and where you could not be comfortable. That era is now gone because it was designed for us to kill each other. And that's all I got to say about that. But uh, like I said, the, the, the bars are not the cause of any of those problems. No, no. All we want to do is, is like what you said, mm -hmm. for me to be in this business as long as I've been in it, I have to love people. That's right. Which I really do. Mm -hmm. And I love to see people have fun. Right. And enjoy themselves. That's why I, I think the music that I've always been so fond of, that I wanted to have in my places, establishments, mm -hmm. I could see the enjoyment in the people that were listening to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they like it, I like it. Right. So right. That's right. That's what I want them to listen and, to. And, and you know what? The music made... The music made... It was like the icing on the cake for places right. because of the fact that people would dance. They loved to, with hearing the songs they were on the radio. You know, our, our music is not on the radio anymore. Right. So, therefore, uh, w w what place we going to go to, to, to enjoy ourselves, really, to hear Gladys Knight or to hear Aretha or to hear uh, me on the radio? <laughs> There's no place. There's no places like that anymore. No. So uh, you have to, it's, it's, it's a damn shame, but you know, when you have a fear of going out, that's why seniors, senior citizens like you and myself, we prefer being out in the daytime and get back in yeah. early because the fact these, these kids are, 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 are going to have gone ballistic. Uh, Larry, mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with your club. It had nothing to do with Clarence's club. It had nothing to do. Don Simmons is still, yeah. he's still operating and in Inglewood. In Inglewood. So now, you explain, you explain that to me, how come uh, the South Side can't get liquor licensed to, to anymore. You explain that to me, mm -hmm. okay? Um, there is no explanation. It's, we only got a few. You know? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to get into politics. Let's. Uh, but so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to get we into won't politics. get into all that because, boy, that's but, debated. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's too deep. But, uh, <laughs> like I said, I've just enjoyed this all of my life. I'm going I'm to, hopefully, uh, Lord willing, I'll, have, I'll be healthy next year. Mm hmm. And I can celebrate my 50 years in this business. 50 years. And try to have a big one with many entertainers I can find that yes. will want to show up. And right. And have we a just big have, show. A, have a hoopla. <laughs> a big hoopla. Yeah. We just and have celebrate big. 50 years watching other people have fun. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if there's no more, Larry, you want to talk about it, you want to, shout out, you want to do a shout out at somebody? Uh, you want to holler out at somebody? Yeah, I'd like to do a shout out to my my children first of all. Okay. <laughs> my grandkids. Oh, that's you. Oh, that's that's that's, that's when I won bar the year I won bartender of the year. Right. That's when. I boy, was, he was fine, I wasn't was he, girl? Bartender. And you see how bartenders dressed in those days? Yeah. That, guess what? <laughs> they was dressed. <laughs> guess what? I'm. That's what I'm talking about. They dressed. We had uniforms. Right. They dressed. And that's how. You know? That's what I had to wear every day to. Yeah. They, they, they classy. Classy. To, uh, work the bar. Yeah. I just, hey, hey, ladies. He's he's fine with. <laughs> he's fine now. <laughs> he's yeah. fine now. You got anything else you want to show us, Tony? No. Okay, darling. All right. Well, yeah, you want to shout out to you, to your children, you see? my children and my grandchildren, my granddaughter and my two grandsons. All right. Yeah, that was, those are my life. All right. Yes, they okay. are. And uh, just let them all that I know that I love them. All right. I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Sam Fisher also, who's like a brother to me and I've been he's been with me as a manager 
mm -hmm. since 59th and State. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. Over 30 years he's been with me, Goodness. and he's been a little sick lately, but he's mm -hmm. doing better now, and I'm hoping that he gets well soon so we can get back together. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And well, uh, Perv Staples. Yeah, Perv, you didn't naturally Perv. Perv, you gotta, where you at? You got to come out. You got to get straight so we can have our talks. That's right. <laughs> not, not only you got to get straight some talk about so I can talk about you. <laughs> now, don't nobody get mad at me for not shouting you out. Now, you know I know too many people to shout you, out. That, <laughs> yeah, you, better, you know you better hurry up and say that. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I really want to thank the uh, <laughs> Chicago Blues Hall of Fame for even thinking about guys like myself for uh, being inducted because uh, I never had any idea that I would even uh, be in this position. I just did what I did because that's what I wanted to do. Well, as far as running a tavern is concerned. Well, Larry, all those years you did good. You did I good. That. You did good, and uh, you you, in my book, you're a great person. Thank you. Yeah, you're a great person, and you deserve all the honors and the respect of of Chicago. That Chicago can give you because you did, you did, you were history. You were part of making Chicago history and especially on the south side of Chicago. And I thank you. I thank you for being there for us. And thank you. I really do. For allowing me to be here. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for being here now. I thank you because I don't want to let the lives that I know that I lived with and that I came up with to go unsung. And, and uh, I mean this, I mean this from my heart. So you guys are to me part of my treasure. You understand? And anything that you need me to do, all you gotta do is holler. Okay, but I need one more, to say one more thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would be remiss if I don't say this because Mm -hmm. I went all around the uh, United States, mm -hmm. and my, uh, my speech introducing myself, I would always say, my name is Larry Stevens, mm -hmm. and I drink for a living. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, because <laughs> you can't top that one. <laughs> on, my, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you for joining us to honor Larry Stevens who will be inducted into the 2017 Chicago Blues Hall of Fame at Buddy Guy's October the 15th, starting at 2 p.m. at on uh, Balboa and Wabash Avenue and Street. It was my pleasure, and always remember, I am the original black blonde bombshell gonna blow you up every time with Love is. Good night.